Creating copies of tables is a little bit trickier than creating copies of variables, so let's take a quick look at this. There's a little anomaly here where if we just uh, create a direct copy of a table, it actually only refers to the original memory address, and so it's not a unique copy, and I'll explain that right here. Okay, if we create a table, so my table equals, and then we'll just go ahead and insert some values here. How about apple, orange, and banana? Now we'll go ahead and create a dialog message box here after this, and we're just doing this for reference. And in our dialog, we're going to leave the title blank, and we're just going to display the second element of that table. So my table, um, we'll refer to this numerically using the index 2, and we'll put that in the body of our dialog message. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and create a new copy, or a new table rather, by creating a copy of this table. So we'll say new table equals my table. So we've created a new table here, right? Well, we'll see. Basically what we're trying to do is create a copy of a table. But you'll find out later in this lesson that actually it doesn't create a unique copy when we do this. But let's go ahead and see this through, and you'll see what I mean. We'll go ahead and insert another dialog message box here so that we can compare our values. And I'm going to, again, leave the title portion blank. And in the body portion, I'm going to refer to the second element of our new table. Okay, so again, numerically with the number 2. Now, everything seems fine up till here. We can go ahead and preview this and see how it works. As you can see, it tells us orange because that's the first dialog message box. That's the second element of our original table. And when I close that dialog, another one pops up instantly that also says orange because that's the second element of our new table. So, so far everything works great. But let's take a look at this anomaly that comes along with this. If we change an element in our original table, so my table 2 equals pair, and we're doing this after we've already displayed those first two dialogues, and then we go ahead and display another dialog message box, this time again referring to the second element of the new table. Okay, so again I'll leave the title blank. I'll say new table 2. Let's take a look at what happens. In theory, we should get the word orange three times, right? Well, let's see. Orange, orange, pear. Now, why did this happen? Let's go back to our project here and take a look. When we created this copy of this table here, or when we attempted to create a copy of the table here by just reassigning it, so new table equals my table, what we actually did was we just created a reference to the original memory address of that table. So now when we altered the original table, it's actually reflected in the contents of the new table as well here. So we need to fix this little anomaly if we want to create a unique copy of this table. And here's how we do it. I'm going to remove this line of code, and we're going to go up here and just create the table, new table, as an empty table by saying new table equals curly braces, semicolon. Okay, now what we need to do is use our special for statement to walk through our original table and create a copy of it. So we'll say for index comma value in my table do. We'll put in the end portion of the statement and in between here we're going to take our new table so new table and we're going to set the index value to be equal to the index value of our loop and then we're going to just go ahead and insert the value of our current table value here into it. Okay, so what it's going to do, in other words, is it's going to walk through our original table, my table, and it's going to assign the index and the value to the corresponding place in our new table. So for example, uh, index number one is apple, index number two is orange, and index number three is banana. Now, if we've done our job here, when we run this particular code, we should now get the word orange three times in a row rather than getting the word pair on the last try. Because after we've altered the original table here, it, doesn't, it shouldn't matter if we've created a unique copy of our table. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. Orange, orange, orange. So that means this time we've actually created a unique copy of our table. So that's a tip on creating copies of tables. And if you go through this lesson a couple times, I think it'll become pretty apparent uh, what's going on here. Obviously, in some situations, you might not want to create a unique copy. You might actually want to refer to the original table. So you can basically 
um, go through this and once you understand the technique use whichever method is best for your project but typically if you're going to be creating a copy of a table the best way to do it is to walk through it like this now if you're using a multi-dimensional table you're actually going to have to take into account for that and work that out as part of your loop okay so let's go on to the next lesson